Despite the relatively small number of Christians in Japan, Christmas is still one of the most famous and popular holidays. The way Japan celebrates Christmas, however, is a little different to how we generally celebrate it in the West. It's more of a romantic holiday than something you spend with family, and some of the traditions that have sprung up over the years, such as Christmas cakes from convenience stores and KFC for dinner, might seem a little odd to those first hearing about them. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we're going to be looking at a few bizarre incidents that have occurred in Japan over the years throughout the Christmas period. By the way, did you know that you can find the tomb of Jesus Christ in Aomori Prefecture? Seriously, go look it up. To start, we're going all the way back to 1964, smack bang in the middle of the Showa era, and an incident that came to be known as the Christmas Eve Crybaby Robber. This incident appeared in the December 25th, 1964 edition of the Asahi newspaper. The article, with the headline, Crybaby Robber Appears in Town on Christmas Eve, went on to describe a strange incident that happened in Tokyo the night before. According to the newspaper, on December 24th, a man barged into a maternity clinic in Musashino City, Tokyo, brandishing a knife and demanding, Gimme all your money! Trembling, the man thrust his knife towards one of the patients and stole a wallet with 200 yen inside, as well as a wristwatch. He then fled the scene. The man popped up again a short while later, this time at a private residence. He again burst inside and waved his knife around, screaming, Give me all your money! However, the owner of the house was having none of it and told the man to knock your stupid crap off. Instead, he lectured the thief, who then reportedly left without taking anything. Yet, he wasn't done yet, and he was discovered when trying to break into an apartment building that same night. There, he confessed, blubbering like a baby, that he was trying to get money so that he could buy some skiing equipment. All of this, it turned out, was so the man could simply buy some stuff for skiing. and. All he got out of his three attempts was a wristwatch and roughly $10 in today's currency. The newspaper snarkily remarked that, rather than a red-nosed reindeer appearing for Christmas night, a red-nosed crybaby appeared instead. Ouch! Only five short days later, another interesting article was published in the same Asahi newspaper, this time under the headline, Strange Santa. It seemed that throughout December, someone had been going around Tokyo and leaving anonymous envelopes full of cash, Swiss wristwatches and other expensive items. The mysterious gifter came to be known as the strange Santa around town and nobody was sure who was doing it or why. If only the red-nosed crybaby had gotten one of those envelopes, then Maybe he wouldn't have had to have gone on his ill-advised failure of a robbery spree, huh? Yet, the strange Santa apparently didn't end his gifting spree at Christmas, and this continued into the new year as well. There were rumours that perhaps there was more than one strange Santa, and it was actually a group of criminals who were committing robberies and then distributing their goods at random throughout the city. Why they would be doing this remains unknown, but when a criminal was caught shortly thereafter for robbery in Chiba Prefecture, many people suspected he was one of the strange Santas. There was, of course, no proof of this, nor did he claim to be one. In the end, nobody knew who was doing this, if it was one or more people, and perhaps most importantly, why? The Nakano police chief even commented publicly on the strange case, saying, I have one thing to say to Santa-kun. Why don't you give yourself up? You should do things in a more ordinary fashion. Strange Santa never did come forward and the expensive anonymous gifts also dried up. Moving forward to Christmas Eve, 1971. This time, a shopkeeper in Shinjuku's Sanchome complained to nearby police that a suspicious paper bag was left behind the police box. 
An officer immediately went to check the bag and discovered a 50 centimeter Christmas tree inside. Several wires were poking out from beneath the tree, however, so the officer feared that it may have been a bomb. And he was right, because as he went to call the suspicious bag in, it exploded right beneath him. The officer's left leg was blown off, as were four fingers from his left hand. He also ended up losing sight in his right eye, while six passers-by also sustained light injuries. This was far from the only bombing that year that had injured civilians, and only six days earlier, the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Chief's house received a parcel disguised as a gift that exploded, killing his wife and 13-year-old son. It turned out that the bomb had been sent by a group calling themselves the Violent Revolutionary Left, who had taken offence at a statement mistakenly attributed to the police chief, claiming that police officers should be able to use guns in legitimate circumstances. The quote had actually come from one of the chief's subordinates, but the damage was done. With all of this taking place, the police then declared a state of emergency, as these new left bombings were also now indiscriminately targeting the public. Eyewitness testimonies led police to a young man who confessed and was arrested for the Christmas tree bombing. A search of his house found he belonged to the Black Hell Group. This group was largely made up of university students and minor stage actors, who didn't belong to any particular sect or organisation, but came together as a group of activists known for wearing black helmets at protests and demonstrations. Their leader, Kamata Toshihiko, was the one behind everything and he soon went on the run. He wasn't arrested until March 1980, nearly a decade later. These two attacks came from unrelated groups and Kamata later admitted that he had no plan in mind when it came to the bombings. He simply wished to escalate matters and cause a little chaos. The Christmas tree was chosen because few people would really pay attention to it on Christmas Eve and it could be used to sow the most chaos. Finally, let's jump forward to 2015. Since 1990, the program Akashia Santa's Greatest Christmas Present Show in History has aired each Christmas without fail. During the 2015 edition, a 46-year-old housewife appeared on the show to tell her tragic story. My husband has been missing for the last two months, and I've been searching for him all this time. The police had been unable to locate the man as well, and she wanted to find him before the end of the year. The news quickly spread throughout Japanese social media under tags like, Searching for someone from Akashiya Santa. It even made the regular news. Although the woman sadly didn't get her Christmas present of her husband's return, she did update her Twitter four months later, in April 2016. Sadly, it wasn't good news. Thank you to everyone who took an interest in my story. My husband was found gathering edible plants in the mountains, roughly 120 metres from our house. Almost half a year has passed since he disappeared, so he was mummified, but... I'm glad he's back. The woman's matter-of-fact and unceasingly polite tone when met with the grisly fate of her beloved husband certainly drew some bitter laughs, and although she wasn't able to reunite with her husband alive, the search put out for him through the Akashia Santa Christmas show did help reunite them in the end, even if her husband had become a mummy by that point. These are just some of the strange and horrifying incidents that have occurred during Christmas in Japan over the years. Which was your favourite? Do you have any stories from your own hometown regarding Christmas oddities? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time. Happy holidays everyone!